All right, guys, morning. I did warn you that the quality might slip season two. So let's see how we feel about this one. It is an utterly mediocre game on my end as a Solvies. I'm not going to spoil whether I win or lose. Somebody um, suggested that in the comments yesterday, and that might be kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, let's see how we go. I'm playing on Solvies. So uh, I did have a lot of fun on this build. Here I am mousing over traits at the start. Um, there's a lot of different swaps and things that are actually uh, tangible here. I'm trying the the healing one just for a bit of it's sustain in certain areas that actually might be quite appreciable. Obviously, the weakness is really good as well. I'm not saying this is the better trait. I'm just having a look at it. Anyway, so yeah, um, checking out a little bit of uh, some Soul Beast Q. Uh, and so what this is, guys, is it's a lot like fresh air, except tankier because you get more vitality, higher armor rating, uh, more quality of life in terms of evades. Uh, you can burst harder, you can burst from further away, and you can burst more unblockably. <laughs> so that's everything it does. It's less on super speed and maybe some small moment-to-moment -moment utility. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how we go. I haven't played this for ages, uh, and I do particularly badly on this map. So anyway, Solvice is pretty good on this map, Temple, just because what you can do is stand up on the ledge that I was at there and you can rain hell on anyone that gets on the nodes. But what you'll notice on this engagement, as I've paused here, is nobody like engaged early, which is smart. And in fact, this guy seems to be looking at me, which makes me think he might be smart. So he's on a Tempest. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, I take the focus on him because why not? And I, I push forwards. Uh, so what you'll see is I precast the one wolf pack. I also precast my Warhorn 5 to give me Fury, which... Uh, has additional buffs when you're a soul beast uh, and a tiny bit of might. Sometimes you can bounce that as well with we heal as one if you like. And the idea anyway is to, with these up, you can beast mode in the middle of like uh, a longbow two and you can blow people up. So anyway, I do this and I don't longbow two for a while and this is where we put his health. As an Ellie, I know I'll get him very low very quickly. Um, and he's forced to abandon his overload attempt, whatever the else the hell he was trying to do. Uh, and so he's obstructing me now. So I could run all the way in there, but I don't really think that's a very good idea. I'm also not at all interested in the cap whatsoever. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is look at what's going on elsewhere, what other lines of sight I have. So I look over and I see, well, I've got an ally that's low, an enemy that's low, and someone harassing my ally. But the team has called the target on that person up there who's a necro. So what I've actually done here is I've pressed the keybind T on my keyboard, which has taken me to that target. And now I'm actually regretting a little bit the burst I did on the Ellie, but it caused him to get off my back for a second. So we continue harassing. You'll see that I'm getting double, uh, two packets of white numbers there. It's because one wolf pack is still up. So I'm still getting really good harass. The longbow one actually does more damage from further away too. So just from holding beast mode, even though a lot like my fury and stuff's dropped, it's still actually kind of nice. I also, by being with a smoke scale, have an evade on the F2, which is also kind of nice. So anyway, I'm just trying to pressure. By pulling back up the road a little bit here, I unlock a little bit more position. And anyway, so now uh, this guy is still angry with me, and he's come at me at, you know, 30% health while I'm on 100. Not a very good play, and I even have uh, a bit of line back here from this guy. Everyone's actually doing all right with a node on this one, I think. Most people have realized that you want to be fighting and focusing there. So anyway, I come back towards this. You see, I stepped forward ever so slightly because I didn't want to proc whatever this was. I think a mark or something. Um, so here, I've been scared of the guy. So what I've done is um, tried to knock him back. It hasn't worked. And instead, use lightning reflexes to roll away. And if you look over here, uh, we've managed to secure the kill. So that's very good. My necros help slam him down. So I've taken some haze on that, the skill 2. I really don't think I had to do that, though. Uh, this 15,000 damage from pressing 2 um, would probably have been better elsewhere and just leaving this rotting. Now, he would have used, like, an emote on me, which would have been a bit of frustrating. But delaying this respawn is really important on the opening mid on this fight because mid is so close to the spawn nodes. Um, you guys have probably all had this experience if you played uh, this map much where you have nice team fights and you're actually decisively winning and they're even trickling. But they're doing it so fast, it's kind of frustrating. So leaving him like this, I mean, he's absolutely no threat whatsoever. Uh, but I did that. And you'll notice even during the skill 2 animation, I've retargeted. And I know, look, we want to one v uh, 2v1 this now. So we watch for the warrior. I take the smoke scale assault. Warrior's likely going to block a lot. 
So I can get through all of his blocks, but to do it, I need to be in beast mode and use the five, or out of beast mode and go in. Both of those uh, ways to make myself unblockable, neither were available there. So I pulled out, and what I do here is actually really kind of nice. I mean, really, I don't know how the muscle memory worked out here. But I knew his, his shield five was about to end. So I did proc the Warhorn four. And right, and what a warrior will usually do is dodge after his shield five, right? And I aim for a Warhorn four in the window between the block and the dodge. And we actually get it. So you see the dodge there with the evades. But if you watch between... Oh, no, I don't get it. I don't get it. That makes sense. I, I was trying that, and I thought there in the footage afterwards I was going to get it. So, yeah, anyway, it's pretty silly. We should have waited for after the evade. Uh, so, anyway, the warrior probably should have bailed out now. He's not going to survive on node against a reaper grinding him down and this ranging him. But he comes back in. This is his mistake. Uh, he does impress me a bit later, though. So, um, you know, it's not like he's a terrible player. We knock him down. Now, we notice back over here again, this little fight's still going on. Maybe it was all right for the warrior if he knew that this engagement was going in his favor and he was about to equalize into a 2v2, but he just didn't have the sustain for it, right? Um, I think he procced our allied DH's trap here as well as he bailed off, which is particularly gross for him. Uh, so, anyway, my situation up here is what I'd really love to do is point blank shot from here and mess him up, but I don't have point blank shot. Uh, there's not much I can do really. I can haze the area with a barrage and just some regular attacks. And we try. But obviously that stomp's gonna go through. Except when it does, the guy doesn't rally. So this is very good and obviously that was the main fear. Also my ally charged in. So we're doing alright at the moment. You know, that's double cap for us in theory. Except we've been decapped. So I'm the first one to run back. I pet swap. As I'm breaking combat, that's giving me super speed. Uh, and then I uh, lightning reflexes backwards as well as the super speed runs out to give myself maximum momentum coming back. And we come to this thief. Now, if you remember yesterday's game of the day, uh, this is my second game of the season. And I lost the first. Uh, so the builds we're finding here are not going to They're all going to be really cheesy, easy, low value builds. Uh, and that's what this thief is running. Um, I guess I won't spoil it, but I don't know what I'm walking into right now. I don't know whether he's meta. I don't know if whether I see something that's different about him to what I'm used to. It's also meta. So, I just go on in. You'll notice I run Sikkim on this build, by the way. I love Sikkim on this build. And, uh, amazingly, there'll be a good demonstration as to why right here. Uh, so, the thief ports off straight away. I'm in the middle of casting my Warhorn 4. I don't have one wolf pack or anything up, but I do have the Fury, so this will hit him hard. We'll see how he's doing. And there's something about his lack of buffs that uh, kind of tips me off that something's a bit weird here. He ports off before he gets full cap, which denies them a few points and um, could end up crucial. So uh, there we go. We get that on him. I use the Warhorn 5 and go into beast mode together. And the reason I do this is because even though he's stealthed, I know the birds are still nibbling at his face. And by doing this, I up my stats even further, right? To make the hawks and things do even more damage. And I know as well that I don't need the unblockable from afterwards. Uh, for, for any point in the fight, really. Because he's unlikely to be on bandit's defense or whatever. So then also, I know that it's a thief that just stealthed. And I don't know how bursty he's going to be. Or what the situation is. So I immediately start my worldly impact. Because if he's running at me with a dagger or something. I'll just kill him if he's come onto this node. He will just die. So that's the plan. And as I'm executing it. I see some pistol shots here. Now this could be the thief that's up here with a pistol. Or it could be a thieves guild. So I worldly impact. I target. And I see it's actually a thieves guild. With reveal on it. And it, so it was stealthed by the guy. And then... Uh, you know, it's just come and attacked me. So I evade, like, away, and we get a ton of evades. And as I evade the Thieves' Guilds, I also get a ton of evades from underneath me. Did you guys see that? Which tips me off that the real Thief is not up there. That's just his, his aggro. He's somewhere else. So I get the one wolf pack because I know I'm going to need this to burst this guy down. He's a cheesy stealth and unload build. And now I've got the job of retarget. So I retarget, but it puts me on the second thief. And now I have to retarget again, and it will finally put me on the correct one. When I target this guy, I can sick him, him with one wolf pack, with the fury, We're in beast mode. This is the burst that we get here. So that's what I'm going for. And instead of healing, I instead 
pop Signet of Stone, which makes me invulnerable, and aim for a CC on the Gazelle. If I was on Smoke Scale instead, we could probably kill him right here, right now, because I would be evading onto him, chewing his face off, and we'd stick him in the middle. Uh, but I go for the CC, he dodges it. Uh, I also get a horrible blind, so now I and we're taking damage again already, so I need to heal. He steals into me, but I think it misses. And there, I just go point blank shot, skill two. Very simple. I don't even have to look at him. I'm a ranger, and uh, we just kill him. That was all I was waiting for, just the kill. And um, yeah, down he goes. Don't forget, Sikkim increases our damage by 40% and stuff. So that's fine. He's also so far away from the node, his autos can't hit me. And he's so far away from the node, if I just step back, at, he can't even port on to contest me. So I just stand around, really, and just use autos. I probably could have rotted him much more heavily. Over the coming days, as I get de-rust, I'll probably be better. Here I'm frustrated because this guy's come in for no reason, as far as I could first tell. And then he hides by the corner of the door. And I was like, oh, all right, maybe he's not bad, doubling up on this cap. Instead of being at mid, where you can see the real fight is. Uh, maybe something's going on. So I look to the right to see if something's harassing us. And I even walk back a bit. I don't really see it. I come out. I'm still looking behind because I think something must be up. Why is this guy here with me? And I'll look. A reaper was hiding behind the wall to hit this guy? I mean, strange. Uh, but maybe an okay play. <laughs> uh, so anyway, now he's harassed into a 1v2. Um... And we're obviously going to kill him. So we go Warhorn 5, Warhorn 4, Beast Mode. We go for a CC. It doesn't land because he blinds us, but it's fine. The Worldly Impact does. We score that kill. The Reaper's stomping there. Didn't have to. All he had to do was smash his face on his keyboard. Uh, and we would have been fine. Now I'm making a mistake. Can you tell what the mistake is? I know that this is... Well, right now I'm not making a mistake. But the heavier I push into this, I'm making a mistake. Can you tell me why? It will become clear in a second. Um, so anyway, low DH, and I do think there's a nice little play here. Um, obviously I want to kill, and we can kill if we just had a little, you know, a little bit of luck with the, with the crits, but we didn't uh, have any fury juggle up, so that's fine. I'm killing him to save my ally over here as well. Um, it's a DH, he dodges, and now he goes into renewed focus. So, one thing you guys, if you want to get, like, better players, you want to remember is, like, standard skill chains think people do. So when you see a dragon hunter do a renewed focus, you should nearly always expect to dodge afterwards into their F3. Their F3 allowing them to block from in front and their F3 mitigating projectiles. So luckily my cooldown here on beast mode is perfect that when he comes out of the renewed focus, what I can do is go into beast modes and I can get through whatever he's going to try and block and will kill him anyway. Uh, but he also gets a nice line of sight here. With his F2 that refreshed. Uh, which is all fine and good for him. I'm now making a mistake. What's the mistake? The mistake is we just killed the thief on close. And I've walked right across his spawn. Vulnerable to him. Without even looking to see if he's respawned. I'm banking on him wandering to mid. But why would he do that when there's an engagement right before his eyes? People will always take the most, you know, obvious approach. They'll act like AI a lot of times. So I'm in like red danger. And I'm not aware of it in the moment. And look at this straight away. He starts attacking me. And as soon as this happens, I think, Christ. Yes, we got the kill, but I should have thought of this. This would have been fine. My guy wasn't even that hurt, right? If I took just a couple of auto attacks to haze that guy there. If I had just had a, my brains about me, I could have looked to the left. One wolf pack and blown up that thief so hard, honestly. and Because you get such a great line of sight across that entire field over there. But I didn't. So I played badly, and now the thief is on me. And like I said, it's mediocre gameplay from me here. Uh, the thief comes in. Um, now this DH is low. This is a squishy ass thief that can easily be CC'd. My guy put it down on the floor um, and has no awareness. So the, the, the player quality is really low right now. He has no idea what's going on. All this guy needs to do is just CC that or, or just kill this. That's all he has to do. Uh, and he just wanders off right right under the nose of this. So I get the delay. My ally's still wandering off. This guy shadow refuges uh, on himself instead of even the body. The, the, the guy, there's, so, there's a lot of ways that this thief could have played this. I don't think the shadow refuge there was one of them. I mean, kind of, because he stops the, the pet. Or if, you know, if I swap to the smoke scale now, the smoke scale could oil him and knock him down. Um, and he knows that I'm going to use the F3. And But, I mean, come on, man. I've already used my F2. All he has to do is press F again. The big story here is that my friendly... And look at this. Look what the thief lets happen to his friend here. Look at this. 
All my, all my guy had to do was auto. My ally. But he's going for decap instead. Tunnel visioning the nodes. Got no idea what's coming, going on. So there you go. We die. And now my guy's 2v1 up there as well, right? So there was nothing worthwhile with that decap. We do at least have this. And the necros didn't um, do anything too bad at mid. You know, they've cleared that Ellie off of it. I'm on respawn and I can pick up close. So it's okay. My guardian does actually know how to bail off in the 1v2, which is something, I guess. Um, and the enemy team knows how to harass him instead of taking the node over there as well. Uh, leaving it, choosing to leave it neutral. Then my guardian goes back on instead of peeling back towards me. If the guardian who was round the back here instead walked through like this, I could have 1500 range assisted him. And that's what I'm looking at here. Um, our necro doing nothing on mid also could have pushed, maybe. Uh, anyway... Here, stillness is coming up, and I'm aware of it in the moment, but I will promptly forget about it and not, not interact with it afterwards. So my Guardian dies, and what, I'm, what I game for here is I know that I've got numbers here, and I know I've got a Guardian on respawn. So what I game for is a greed play, where basically I know that there's two players there, the thief, the two that killed us before in a staggered 2v2 there. So what I'm going to do is come around the side and hope that one of them brainlessly walks off and 1v1 the other one. Because I know I can chew either of them out in a 1v1. But what I'm doing here is I'm pushing for far point. So here, I see that this guy's walked through. But I don't respect the player quality right now at all. I don't know whether he's seen me. So I don't attack him or anything. You even see I like swing the camera to the right. On the hopes that I'll like, like edge away from him or something. So we, we see, there's the thief. Now the thief's seen me and immediately stealthed. And now I know he's like full on gimmick, whatever. I know he's going to jump out of stuff probably with another thieves guild. I got one wolf pack ready. And what we'll do is sick him, him to reveal him. I'm feeling confident as long as that Guardian hasn't noticed this. The Thief, once again, getting off the node before full cap. So we've actually denied that for them twice now. Thus eking out a couple of points uh, that we otherwise might not have. So as soon as I see him, I opt for the four first. Because I know my damage window is going to be really narrow. So I want the four first. Then I want to use the five afterwards. And I'll get the sick him in the middle of the cast. Okay. So that's the order I go in. And now we use beast mode. And what I tried to do was a smoke scale assault straight away. If I'd nailed that, he'd be dead right now, right? Over the next, like, half a second. But he shadow stepped, thus uh, breaking the line on, on the F2. And putting on to instant, like, interrupt ICD. So I now have to wait three seconds before I can do that. Which is a bit frustrating because that's some of my evade up time. And that's, like, the kill into not the kill. But I'm still very confident with this because I got longbow and everything. He steals to me and does nothing. Here, so you can see, he shadow refuges, but it didn't do anything because he still, was still under the effects of Sikkim. Now all I, in theory, have to do is worldly impact because it forces him out of the shadow refuge. But I take too long to do it. I think he realizes anyway, or he's just a bad player and he walks out. So walking out of a shadow refuge reveals you. Um, so then I cancel cast my worldly impact. Go straight to the longbow three to stealth myself in case he's got another trick up his sleeve. And then jump up and down while using the F2 to um, finish him off uh, before his smoke screen can come down. Then I'm immediately turning back to the node here. And I think this is a mistake of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn, uh, good, I didn't do that. Um, if I turn back to the node and try and fight that guy, I make him aware of, my, of me. In case he's a bad player, he might just sit there. Uh, but also, I give up my opportunity to insta cleave this down. I don't want to fight a guardian while a thief's all owing me at the same time as well. So I immediately come back on the thief and shoot him. But I'm concerned because he's running this, this silly trait where you uh, project block projectiles in downstate. And funnily enough, I don't have a way of dealing with it right now. So um, I opt for the heal. I worldly impact instead of using longbow stuff. I take the pet out of me and let the pet do some damage. I'm trying to swap as quickly as possible. Guardian has noticed. So now my job is to cleave this down while the res is going on and keep myself alive. So you can see he immediately starts resing and I immediately point blank shot to get the interrupt. I aim myself so that my longbow 2 goes through the body and the reser. I go for the uh, barrage. And realistically, I should have beast moded already by now, I think. Uh, but he gets the res. Um, he also puts a, a GS5. And now I'm in a 2v1. So you remember when this all started? All right, I, I was going to say it. I don't know if I did. I said I was kind of playing a far point role. On yesterday's Game of the Day, you saw I was playing a lot of back point stuff. 
And I really prefer that on builds like this. It was bad for me to be here the whole time. Now, the other thing, though, that I've noticed, even though I'm in a 2v1 and taking the focus, is I did get a thief assistance. So, hopefully I can survive or do something here. But this Greatsword 5 hitting me is really concerning me. Because I don't really, until this Signet of Stone comes up, if he double taps that, I don't have a stun break or anything realistically to deal with this right now. Um, so I put away with the double dodge, then he pulls me in. Now I stun break with the um, beast mode. I uh, sick him uh, and use my F2, which is an evade up time. So I'm still alive. I know I want to heal badly, but it's more important I get the invuln. As long as I can get there to it, I get it. I heal right before the burning procs me down. Point blank shot and nail down the thief. Now this all could have been okay at this point. Me turning around like so to kill the thief could have been good. Because I have allied assistance as I pointed out before. And what he can do is destroy this and rally me. Um, however, with 3v2 now. Uh, actually, no, hold on. Yeah, yeah, with 3v2. It's a th this is the thieves guild. With 3v2 because the Ellie's respawns. So, what's going on here? I'm not sure, but the, our three players... So, basically, because we're outnumbered, uh, there was no hope, realistically. My guy was very slow. Uh, he's trying to shoot, I think, with a rifle, and maybe he can't through the, the fields. He shadow refuges. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Uh, so, I die. Now, let's keep watching our ally here in a 3v1. Uh, does he use his thief mobility and ports and stuff to get away? No, he doesn't. He dies. So, pretty unfortunate. And now, honestly, at this point, I know we look like we're really far in the lead, but I'm really not happy with this right now. Um, the other big thing that happened as well was the stillness play. Um, and that was really what held us in it here, I think, while that was live. If we got that anyway. Um, because, yeah, I got distracted with far. So, uh, yeah, I want to reinforce close because I got my double necros at mid there and I'm fine. I know we're two down on the board, essentially, as everybody reestablishes the position. I want to plus this at close, but I have the two incoming and it's the Garden of the Thief again. I'm going to pause a lot less for the rest of the video now, guys. I realize I've been doing it an awful lot, just showing you little soul beastie things. So here I'm uh, obstructing line of sight in, letting the guy run past. Here we get an actual just nice, clean, regular soul beast kill. That's how you do it. Easy peasy. We kill him. Don't need to worldly impact. We'll use that later. We got a point blank shot um, to interrupt that uh, stomp if we really want it. I take the stealth in case the thief was going to jump me. Um, the thief was actually stealth stomping anyway with the warrior, which is why the warrior stopped. I'm in a 2v1, so I have to be very careful. I barrage over me while he's in stealth. I beast mode interrupt with a gazelle. If I'd gone straight into worldly impact there instead of the F1, I would have scored the kill. Um, once again, we managed to force him out with reveal. Uh, the thief goes down again. Now, the warrior is still around. And unfortunately, the warrior had time for full cap. Um, so, the warrior plays well there. And this is where I think, okay, the warrior is actually doing all right. Because what the warrior did was he realized he was outnumbered. Because and he, there was no way of saving the thief and I had respawns. And he immediately went mid. So, the, the warrior impressed me there. Um, and as you saw, I also very quickly bailed away from that thieves body to rot the, the corpse I haven't done that enough this game. I knew the guardian was picking up close So I came all the way back over here to far and I don't feel good about this because again I'm like far pointing so I just take a neutralization and now what I want to do is reinforce this like really shoddy mid You can see where my allies are going down like right here in the trench I've got a downed ally, but also lots of enemies so, I don't want to push in and go to the body. Close quarters isn't what this build's all about. What I want to do is haze and kill them from up here. So, you know, it's very early. I preemptively cast one wolf pack because I know these people are going to walk up. They're going to climb up here. They're either going to come up the ramp and I've got amazing range. Or they're going to come up here and I've got amazing range. And I'm going to kill them. So, I'm, using, I'm executing my burst right now before they're even visible. It's a necro. We kill the necro through a ton of shrouds. So we take the burst through Shroud, nice and standard with the Soul Beast there. Don't crit on our worldly impact. And now, if you look, the Ellie's come around too, who is still low and in combat. And I want to keep them in combat. So I'm going to retarget straight away. Uh, which could have been a 1v2 for me here, really. Um, but two things go wrong that I hadn't anticipated. Which is kind of like really annoying. Um, so let's see if you can guess what it is. What's the disaster here, guys? And it's a true disaster. Uh, we, we try and shoot the Ellie. He's reflecting, but you'll notice the Reaper just stood up. And no, that wasn't the Ellie using Glyph, which is what I thought it might have been. 
he stood up because I had the dead ally in the trench who didn't bandage. If the dead ally just pressed four, that rally wouldn't have happened. I would have rallied him. We would have done great. Either it's because he didn't bandage or someone else is in that trench. Maybe the, maybe the warrior's up on the bit field at the moment. The warrior might have finished him off. But you can see here the kill was not accounted from an enemy player. It was purely just rot. As far as I can see. I mean, it could have been between the autos of a warrior or something. So, but, uh, yeah. So, that's a disaster. And it's a double disaster. Okay, so now I have to bail out. Because I'm like, oh my god, this is really bad. I t come out of the smoke scale. I drop his F2. And then I'm going to pet swap to stealth. And I really need to stay in this area. Because it's a double disaster. Stillness and Trank just came up. And I'm now noticing nobody went to Trank. Nobody's at still. If I'd got that 1v2, it might have been okay. We could have done something. I could have immediately dropped down and then hazed with 1500 range at the bottom. But nobody's anywhere smart at all. And I'm dead. Um, so, yeah, really bad. And watch this, guys. This, the blue team's been struggling with. But as I said from maybe five minutes ago, I haven't been happy with my team for a while now. And you're going to watch a massive equalization from this. Uh, my Guardian runs in and my Necro run in and kind of just get cleaved a bit, to be honest. I, I, I sort of feel like they don't really do any damage there. They die. The thief's back now. They're all swarming stillness. The enemy team took trip cap. Newt was immediately... Mid was immediately re as you can see. I feel like temple games always take a long time to do this commentary on. So we respawn. It's not been a good game for me. A couple of deaths, right? I want to interrupt their caps and stuff on that, but I can't. The shadow refuge comes down, stopping me from being able to kill the thief. So I immediately just come to close. I know the thief might be watching me. I'm pretty comfortable. We have our smoke scale and everything ready. We're going to take the full cap. Always a bit uh, slow and boring, but needs to be done. All my allies won mid, but zerged away, I guess, and held it new. Bit unfortunate there. Thief is coming up towards the node that I've comfortably capped a while ago and is completely unharassed. Not really doing very much. Guardian goes to far. So now we have the warrior. Okay, now as I said, I was reasonably impressed with the warrior before. And I'm, I am concerned immediately. The guy uses his shield 5 straight away. And so I'm like, alright, maybe he can do something. Nonetheless, I know I can pierce that. We go for our burst. Our unblockable burst. I don't quite land the uh, Warhorn 4 or the Smoke Scale Assault. So it's pretty bad for me. And then the double dodge like solidifies it for me. Look, he knows, he knows how to mitigate there. And into the Endure Pain. So my plan as I come up here is not to jump on the node, obviously. My plan is to haze. His plan is correct as well, in my opinion. What he should be trying to do is neutralize, because I'm far enough behind, and then aggress me. So we will really know. If he newts and then comes at me, we know that uh, he's got a little bit more wits than most people around now. I point blank shot off just to delay the newt for long enough. There it is. And then what does he choose to do? Well, he starts to flee. I think he could have gone up the barrels, and I'm not entirely sure. But so, yeah, I get a bit concerned. He counter CCs me as well before the worldly impact, thus saving his life. He even gets a good shield bash. I take the signet of stone there to interrupt whatever burst I knew he was going for. Uh, and then miss my worldly impact. So now I'm actually concerned here. I know it looks like I've got him on the run, but I really don't. Um, he gets his reflect blocks again. I have to stow my longbow. Now he's closing the gap. This is perfect from him to close the gap right here, right now. Perfect. I know something dangerous is coming. I'm going to try and point blank shot him away. The point blank shot knocks him into the stairs here instead because of the terrain, which won't have been calculated on his end whatsoever. Uh, but that's bad for me. And he immediately goes for the eviscerate, the burst. Um, so now I know I'm in danger. I can still kill him. We go into the gazelle with the F2. That's why Gazelle's so good, by the way. I used to run uh, all kinds of other stuff on this build variant, and uh, Gazelle is the best just because of those extra CCs, I think. Uh, anyway, so the Thief Shadow um, refuges, and I don't really have anything for that, and I'm not going to fight a 1v2. So I pull away and around the side just a little bit just to see what's up. Let my ally re-engage. I know it's a 2v2 now. I come here in case anyone's in stealth trying to jump me. The jumping puzzle I know will throw them off a bit. I see that they have immediately engaged. Like, I'm expecting them to be a bit wittier sometimes, but no, they're still just interested in the node. So I come over now. I've got two targets, Thief or Warrior. I know I have a Reaper. We should, in theory, be okay. I go for the Warrior again because I know that he's in a good position. 
I utilized the Sikkim on the warrior. Could have been over cooldowns there, to be honest. Uh, Reaper comes off and helps out as you win the 2v2. And now I come onto the node, and what I'm signaling to the Reaper is, hey, you're low, you can leave, don't worry. I'll take this 1v1 if the, if the Thief stays. It's kind of not a perfect play from me, because if the Thief engages on my Reaper on the roads, it might not be perfect. But the Reaper just walks all the way over and whatever, fine. Uh, and look at look at the get the score now because of what happens um, at 8:30. We have stillness coming up again, which I want, but the thief's still around, so I can't do anything. He steals and dazes. I take the evades. We watch. We hold the sickum right till we get the F2. He gets a nice blinding powder there on me, and the warriors immediately respawn. And I'm getting, sh oh no, I guess that's still the Thieves Guild. The Necro isn't providing me any assistance. He's trying to cap Stillness under the fight, which is awful in my opinion. But he does at least get the dunk on the Thief. The Thief ports away. It's too late. We're 3v2. We've lost 2 cap. And they're about to get Stillness. So they're now on 4 cap to hour 1 after already having a big gap close. My guys trickle in and lose. And it's getting dicey. This is bad. I, this is not. A, this is not a win at all. No matter how comfortable it may have looked early. And believe me, it wasn't really ever comfortable. Still, I'm a soul beast, and it's good on this map for oh so many reasons. One of them being you can respawn straight into denial of stillness. So the play here is to score some kills. As you see, we take big pressure on the DH. But also, whenever we see that necro. Do you guys like my point blank shots, by the way? I'm the most hideously annoying low skill ranger with those. It's great. Uh, we're trying to hit them both because what we don't want is either of them capping it. I'm not going to try and raise that body. We get a down. Now maybe I could try and raise the body. I push the Reaper away because he's really scary in Shroud. We go for our burst. The F2, he drops down the cliff though, so it denies it. I'm going to pursue him but not follow him all the way down. There's no need. I'll just shoot him from up here. I slip off accidentally, but it's enough. I did enough pressure. Here we take the stomp, and what we're going to do is use the F2 into the wet pet swap so that we're stealthed, and we get safe stomp. Um, and now with that stomp, we get another five points, okay? Five points plus newt, and we got stillness up there. We'll actually secure the game in our favor. All I need to do is make sure nobody neutralizes home in a disaster. They don't, and that our allies don't die on far in a disaster, and they don't. And there you go. That's the game of the day. A Soul Beast Q on Temple. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I genuinely think my gameplay there was really mediocre. But hey, I think this is the first Soul Beast one I've shown off. And Temple's always fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. See, uh, And thanks so much for the comments. Please keep giving me them because it makes the series really rewarding. And uh, yeah, any thoughts you've got. Any way you think I'm right or wrong. Or you th thought something was interesting. Trust me, I read every single one. Um, I like hound them like a complete loser. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.